Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Sonic Robot, also known as Train Robot. Again, uh, the large size, the skirted function, all based off the American-made uh, Robert the Robot and Electric Robot and Son from the very early 50s. Uh, usually the train robot is credited to being like 1960, 1961, somewhere in there. And um, there were a couple of versions of it. The original version, because the box is called Sonic Robot, <clears throat> actually has a windblown slide whistle inside, which made a, a very annoying whistling sound, a very high pitch that raised and lowered in pitch. And uh, that's the rare one to find. Most of the ones that you'll find, the most common version, make a train sound. And I think the reason for that being that no other toy used the slide whistle version. And all kinds of train toys, battery operated, bump and go train toys were being sold at the time. And so that part was already mass produced and therefore probably going to cost less to throw inside the robot than something that no other toy is using. So the original one takes three D cell batteries which go in the back here and they are loaded in there and you have your on off switch here in the front. And it's a, a bump and go drive and as you can hear the train sound and the lights and everything. If you've watched the other videos I did, for example, on the Lavender Non-Stop Robot, where the bump and go drive the motor was part of the wheels, here you can see, since this is like 1960 or 61 in there, they had gone to the simpler version where the motor stays up inside the robot and doesn't move and all they run down with these wheels is a single rotating shaft to a crown gear. I don't know if there's any way we can get that where you can actually see in there it's kind of dark but that was the way that bump and go toys became by the 1960s it's less complicated less things going on now what's actually happening inside here um, these heavy arms are mechanically linked as well and you'll see that here here is one of the base units out of the sonic robot and here you can actually see back in there you can see the crown gear and how a single shaft comes down and that's what runs the bump and go the motor is located right here this green part and this metal part this is your train whistle this is a flap which allows the air to go through the whistle so they can turn it off and on to make a toot 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 sound this large piece here is a cam which controls when that's going to happen. And off this cam, you can see this long arm. This long metal arm would go all the way up to linkage and make the arms both swing together, went to one place so they could both swing forward or backward as need be. <clears throat> this uh, piece of metal right here, going to this contact. And so anytime the whistle is happening, this is up because air can go through the whistle. That's what turns the light on up in the head. So you saw the light in the head turning off and on. I've got uh, three D-cell batteries over here. I'm gonna clip this on with some alligator leads. And hopefully we'll be able to see some of this action. <laughs> the flashing switch and this is be moving the arms up and down you can see how that shaft gets longer and shorter you could do it by, by hand too so anytime you let the air pass through there the whistle would be on the fan is down in here the bump and go drive and of course you can see the motor. <coughs> so, if you ever wanted to know what was inside the Sonic Robot, Train Robot, or even any of the very old bump and go 
uh, battery-operated train toys that whistled like that, now you know.